All right, for the second uh, set theory video, we're only talking about two things, subsets and power sets. So a subset is kind of exactly what it sounds like. A is going to be a subset of B if basically um, this is true. Here's A and it's gonna live inside a bigger set B. Now we'll do a lot of things with diagrams like this later on um, when we get into Venn diagrams. But this is the idea. Um, a is a subset of B because if I take any element that's inside of A, say that blue dot, that blue dot is also inside of B. So A is a subset of B. And here's the definition. If and only if every element of A is also an element of B. Now written uh, using some of the logic notation we have, a is a subset of B if for all X, X is in A implies X is in B. When that's the case, this is the notation we use. When it's not the case, we just use the strike. Now, in order to show that something is a subset, um, you have to show that whenever you have an element in A, that element is also in B. Okay, I wanna say that again. To show that something is a subset, whenever we take something in A, we show that that is also an element of B. But to show that it's not a subset, it suffices to find a single X that is in A, but is not in B, okay? So here's an example. Let S be the set that contains one five. Let T be the set one, three, and five. Well, to show that S is an element, as a subset of T, well, one is in S, one is also in T, five is in S, five is also in T, and that's all the elements of S. Therefore, this has been verified, right? But to show that T is not a subset of S, we have this element in T that is not an element of S. So therefore, T is not a subset of S. All right, moving on. It's a little bit confusing sometimes um, to understand this, the, the following fact. For any set A, the empty set is always a subset of A. And I'm gonna come back to that in just a minute. This one's a little bit easier to follow. A is always a subset of itself. Well, why is that true? Um, if, if X is an element of A, that implies that X is an element of A. And so the, the condition's been checked. So X is always a subset of itself. So let's think about this idea about the empty set being a subset of A. Well, according to the definition, this has to be true. If X is an element of the empty set, then X is an element of A. But think about what we know about implications, about if-then statements. This this is always going to be false because the empty set contains no elements. And so I'm either gonna have false implies true or I'm gonna have false implies a false. In either case, the full implication is going to be true. Remember the truth table for, um, for implications, right? The truth table for implications looks like this. True, 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 false, false, true, false, false. Well, the only time that the implication is false is when we have true implies a false. So if the first part of the implication, if the hypothesis is false, then the whole implication will always be true. And that's why the statement that the empty set is a subset of A is always going to be true. All right, um, moving on to one more piece of, one more definition, um, and that is a proper subset. So if A is a subset of B and A is not equal to B, that's when we say A is a proper subset of B. And, and this is the, the, the notation we use for that. A is a proper subset of B. Think about it like this. Um, we know that if you have two real numbers, X could be less than or equal to Y or X could be strictly less than Y. Well, that's the analogy. When you have two sets, 
A could be a subset of B where we keep open the possibility that they're equal, or I could say that A is a proper subset of B. So it's a similar situation when you're doing inequalities, um, this idea about proper subsets. Now in Python, there are two different ways we can check to see if something is a subset. We can use this, which is using something called a method. Okay, if I have two sets, I can use this is subset method, or I can use this notation right here, which checks to see if something is a subset. So here I've defined two different sets. Let me start this over. There's A is now saved. B is now saved. And now I'm going to print using this, this thing called a method, A dot is subset B. It's checking to see if, if, um, if A is a subset of B. Well, let's, let's take a look at it first, okay? Um, there are elements in A that are not in B. And so that gives me false. Or I can print the next one, which gives me true, because this one is checking to see. Um, notice that, that the notation changed a little bit. This is checking to see if B is a subset of A. And since every element of B is an element of A, then yes, indeed, B is a subset of A. And that's why that came out true. So that's what subsets are. Moving on to the power set. Every set um, has something called its associated power set. And all it is is the set of all subsets of A. And we denote it with P of A. And if you're writing it by hand, we usually use some type of script A. So some type of cursive, excuse me, some type of cursive P of A to, to write that. So here, if A is going to be the set A, B, C, this is the list of all of the um, subsets, which gives us the power set. Now, if you were doing this problem by hand, here's how you would think about it. Let me clear all this off. So I'm going to start out with A equal to A, B, and C. And I want to write out what the power set of A is. Well, remember, th the empty set is a subset of every set. So we always write that one first. We always have the empty set. And then we start listing out all of the one element subsets. That is, we look at all the individual elements of A. So I have the set containing A, I have the set containing B, and the set containing C. So once you've written down all of the one element subsets, you start writing down the two element subsets. I could have a set containing A and B, the set containing A and C, or the set containing B and C. And then finally, I, well, it finally in this case, but in general, we would do the three element subsets. Since A only has three elements, that ends up giving us all of A. So there's A listed again. So that's how you would go about writing out the, the power set of a given set. Notice how many elements there are here. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight elements. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second, but, but just note that. Um, a few more things to point out. Um, the empty set has only itself as a subset. So the power set of the empty set is the set containing the empty set. Now, people find this a little bit confusing sometimes, but I want you to think about it like this. The empty set is similar to an empty box. It's just a box with nothing inside of it. Okay? But let me be a little bit more uh, suggestive with that. So I have a set with nothing inside of it, which we write as a circle with a line through it. Now, if I take a set that contains the empty set, well, what does that mean? That's like taking a box, a little empty box, but that empty box is sitting inside of a larger box. So let me fix that picture. Fix my drawing, fix my drawing right here. That's the difference between the empty set and a set containing the empty set. This is a set 
containing the empty set. The empty set is like a box with nothing in it. A set containing the empty set is like a box with a box inside of it. All right. Now, we can, um, you know, take the power set of a power set. So think about this situation. I have the power set of the set containing one. That is just going to consist of the empty set and the set containing one. But I can take the power set of that previous power set, which is going to be the power set of this set. So now I would list all of the subsets. So I would list the empty set first because it's a subset of every set. And then I have the individual elements, the set containing the empty set, the set containing the set containing one. And then I have the set containing the empty set and one, the set containing one. Okay, so you can kind of iterate this over and over and over. And here's a really important theorem that we can't really talk about. Um, unless we get into something called mathematical induction. Remember when I talked about th this uh, set A before that contained the elements A, B, and C? And we noticed that if we build the power set and we counted and there were eight elements, okay? Well, the cardinality of the set A is equal to three. And the cardinality of its power set was eight but eight is two to the third power, okay? That is not a coincidence. It is a theorem in mathematics that if you start out with a finite set, okay, that has cardinality n, then the power set has cardinality two to the n. This is something I would like you to be, um, I would like you to remember that the cardinality of the power set is always two to the cardinality of the set you started with. Now, that's as far as I wanna cover in this video. The next set of videos we'll get into what are called set operations. So let's move on to doing a couple of example practice problems. So number one, uh, oh, actually, before I do that, let's look at the notes. Um, again, they're just uh, summarizing everything, but I do wanna point out Again, please watch these videos and, and then read through these examples and do your best to understand them. Um, and then we have the practice problems. So here are the practice problems that I want to, that I want to do. Um, I'm not going to do all of number one, but what we're, what we're wanting to do here is using the correct notation, using just equal to or um, sub, subset, so we're not thinking about proper subsets for this problem, indicate which of the following sets are equal and which are subsets, okay? So I'm just going to look at maybe A and B and maybe consider C, okay? So A is the set 3, 6, and 9. B is the set 3, 6, and 9. So look what I did here. I wrote this, uh, I rewrote what, what B was. Remember, Repeated elements don't matter in sets. So six appears twice, but I, but, I, but I just wrote it once over here. Also, the order doesn't matter. So instead of writing six, nine, and three, I just wrote three, six, and nine. So you can see these have exactly the same elements. So A is equal to B. Now, C is the set three, six, nine, 12, 15, so the pattern is that we're adding three to each, to each integer. Well, every element of A, or B for that matter, is also an element of C, so that means A is a subset of C, and also B is a subset of C. So do that for all of the possible pairs of these sets A through F, and figure out which are equal, which are subsets, okay? Um, I mean, if, if, I, if I, just to say one more thing about it, um, I have this element 15 in C that is not in A. That means C is not a subset of A. But you don't have to write all the ones that, that, that aren't subsets. I just want you to find the ones that are equal and, and the ones that are subsets for this problem. Looking at number two, um, assume that the universal set is... Oops. Assume that the universal set 
is the integers. So we're only working with the integers here. And I have three, or excuse me, four different sets defined. And I want to answer these questions. Is A a subset of B? Is C a subset of D? Is A a subset of D? I'm just going to do the first one. So A is the set negative 3, negative 2, 2, and 3. And B is given in set builder notation. Well, to make it a little bit easier to figure out um, subset relationships, I'm going to write it in, in roster notation or using the roster method, okay? So B is going to be all subsets, or excuse me, all elements of the integers such that X squared is 4. Well, that's going to give me negative 2 and 2. Or X squared is 9. That's going to give me negative 3 and 3. Well, look, those are the exact same elements. I have negative 3, negative 3, negative 2, negative 2, 2, 2, 3, 3. So that means that A is equal to B. But don't forget, um, subset, arrange, subset relationship means everything in A is also in B. Well, if two sets are equal, that means anything in A is going to be in B and anything in B is going to be in A. So I have these two subset relationships whenever I have set equality. And this is actually sometimes taken as the definition of, 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 of subsets, but we can even state that as a theorem. If A is equal to B, excuse me, no, 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 something much stronger than this. We can say A is equal to B if and only if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. So uh, in, in, in um, more theoretical math classes, like, um, like a foundations or, or a proof-based math class, um, in order to prove sets are equal, this is what someone would do. You would prove these two set relationships, and that means you've shown the two sets are equal. All right, that's it for this video. Um, the next two, there are going to be two more for set theory, um, and they'll cover set operations like union, intersection, and then um, we'll talk about Venn diagrams.